Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Good morning from the Pixel 6a. That's right, we're gonna go ahead and do a camera test using this. And of course, I had to start things off with a little bit of that boost in the morning. This particular tea is the Geisha Blossom from TWG. Now, shouts out to the friends Mary Bautista, Jason Jonisho, and Alvin Tries Tech, because they are the ones who got me not only the tea, but also the cute little teapot that I used to make this. <music> So we're talking about the Pixel 6a. Now, the A devices in the Pixel lineups tend to be pretty exciting. Now, the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro were high-selling smartphones in the more top-tier, the higher-tier markets. And now we have the 6a, which maybe will sell like hotcakes. And there are a few reasons why you can consider this as your next smartphone, especially if you're looking to save a little bit of money. In the past, we would just go straight to the camera discussion and say, hey, with that computational photography that Google is able to put into all of their Pixels, well, that makes a more affordable pixel kind of a steal because if you're looking to get some really good pictures, selfies, or anything like that while you're on the go or on the daily, well, a pixel is one of those things you can really rely on. Yep, the Pixel 6a is finally here, and I've been using it for some days now. I finally got to actually test the cameras out in the usual scenario, like walking through some lovely gardens, so look forward to more of that as we go through this video. But before we dive further into that camera test, let's dial it back a little and look at the unboxing of this new device. Let's go ahead and get into this. This might be a phone that is applicable for a lot of you out there. I love that there's like no room <laughs> anywhere to pad the phone. They literally went as minimal as possible with the box, which obviously is not going to come with a whole lot aside from the phone itself. This is the Sage color, and I think it actually looks pretty nice. Um, I prefer sort of like a deeper shade of green, uh, but I'll take it. It's also pretty light, which is good. Um, it's definitely smaller than the Pixel 6 Pro that I've been using for a while now. Uh, this is definitely nowhere near the Pixel 5 size and feel but we're probably not gonna get that anymore anyway. USB-C charging cable, and then I actually wanted to mention this real quick. I'm always trying to spin a positive when it comes to what we get in these boxes. It is kind of nice to get a USB-A to USB-C adapter. I know that this is mainly used uh, to transfer data from other phones to your new one here, but you know, for all of the USB-C that we might have in our lives, sometimes it's nice to be able to adapt some of our older cables. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. Definitely loving the size of the phone. It's just nice to get something that's not humongous for once. That black bar which houses the cameras is supposed to be a little bit like a Google search bar. Um, either way, it's a design choice that clearly is going to be sticking around. There is a slight curve to the sides here at the very ends, but the business portion of the display is flat, so this should be an easy phone to maneuver around on the daily. As I'm getting into the new Pixel 6a, uh, let me actually give it a little bit of extra protection with an official case. Uh, this will be the Pixel 6a case. I got this one in gray because the phone itself was already in this sage color. That's not bad at all, and since the phone is already fairly small, it really doesn't add a whole lot of heft. Still makes this phone easily maneuverable. Also, the gray really overpowers and completely covers up the sage colorway. So yeah, nothing too surprising from the unboxing since our smartphone boxes have been getting smaller and smaller over time. Now don't get me wrong, the sage color of the Pixel 6a that I received is pretty nice. It's not my usual shade of green as I prefer a bit of a brighter sort of jade, kind of like a green tea, but it's still pleasing. But if I ever do want to change it up, the case not only makes this phone straight up gray, but it also adds a little bit of grip without blowing up the size very much at all. That's one of the things I want to highlight about this Pixel 6a from the outset. The camera test that we're focusing on in this video was done over the course of the last couple of days, but for the rest of the week before then, I was just using this smartphone as a daily device because I wanted to feel how it would be for general use. That's because I'm super interested in the fact that Google's homemade flagship processor, Tensor, was put in this more affordable version of a Pixel. This is a move that hopefully would yield some higher end performance compared to the rest of the competition at this price point. That's a move that Apple has done with their iPhone SE lineup. They put the current processor in but dial back everything that's around it. Clearly Google is taking that route now and I'll give my final thoughts on it in upcoming content in maybe a week or so, but I think it's been working very effectively so far. That's because Tensor provides a lot more benefits now than just the photography side of things. But let's get back to the camera test for a little while, take a look at these samples, let me know what you think in the comments before I talk through the other capabilities. 
usual spot for me to do these camera tests. And with the Pixel 6a, what you're getting in terms of hardware is a little bit of a mix between like the Pixel 6, uh, not the Pro, the Pixel 6 and what came before it. I say Pixel 6 because this front-facing camera uh, does not do 4K video recording, which uh, is expected, but still a bummer for me. And then for the rear cameras, uh, you're not getting quite as many megapixels, uh, not the same hardware as you would have gotten on the Pixel 6. It's a little bit more like what you had on like the Pixel 5. Now, just like with the Pixel 5, I'm expecting pictures out of this phone to be really good, video to be somewhat enhanced with like some of those HDR enhancements that came with the Pixel 6, and of course, stabilization on top of all of that. So you can see how the pictures in particular are benefiting from Google's well-known computational processing. That should come as no surprise, but now that Tensor is at the helm in this phone, I've noticed that the actual time it takes to get from what the lens captures to what the software edits is much more improved. You see, in the past, we have had like mid-range Qualcomm processors doing all of the work in the previous A-series devices, but now they can actually keep up with what you can consider to be like burst level um, shooting scenarios. And the processing actually gets done quite quicker than before. So that all basically points to how Tensor is really doing its job even considering the rest of the hardware that was put around it. Because that's how Google is making the 6A happen in the first place, right? The brain of the smartphone is maybe what we saw in their flagship phones, but everything else around it is relatively dialed back. This display is a full HD plus panel without a high refresh rate, making 60 FPS your go-to for all of those games that you might play. So in Diablo Immortal, for example, I'm starting a new character comfortably with very high settings at 60 FPS. In Genshin Impact, I was feeling the same frame drops here and there that I experienced on the Pixel 6 Pro, but nothing especially worse. At high but not ultra graphic settings, I did bring it down to 45 FPS for a decent measure, and it's been fine at those settings. In the past, A-series Pixel smartphones were all about giving the, let's say, middling camera hardware a big boost with Google computational magic. That is still certainly the case here considering we have 12 megapixel rear cameras in both wide and ultra wide varieties. This front facing camera is an 8 megapixel shooter, though it doesn't do 4K video recording Ooh. like I have been mentioning earlier. Gotta get into the shade a little bit. It's a really hot day, just like it is pretty much anywhere in the world. Uh, top tip, make sure you're wearing sunscreen. Just, just top tip for any season really uh, but in any case i'm actually sitting a bit far away from the pixel 6a right now uh, just to show off another feature that i found in the settings for video uh, you can use bluetooth audio now um, i actually can't remember if this is was this was a feature on the pixel 6 pro that i was using uh, i feel like if it was i would have used it more often but in any case, you might get decent microphones on the actual phone itself. Uh, pretty good for selfie video and stuff like that. But if you want to get a little bit more creative, you can use your Bluetooth earbuds or a Bluetooth microphone for video like this. Just for the sake of showing it off a little bit more, uh, I am using the front-facing camera now. Again, no 4K video recording, unfortunately, but I am using audio from these Freebirds. Uh, and yeah, that's a feature that you can have here on both the rear and the front if you want to have more localized audio. For the sake of showing off the feature a little bit more, uh, here's the front-facing camera using the Bluetooth input audio. I also have the speech enhancement feature on, which hopefully is helping out because I have a little bit of a, uh, what's the term here? A little bit of a babbling brook right next to me. Oh, and of course, zooming is not really going to be a thing on the Pixel 6a. You don't get any telephoto lenses, certainly no periscope. I'm hitting the 2x right now on video mode, so obviously it's going to be cropping into the main sensor. Uh, let's go a little bit farther in, topping out at five times zoom. Often it's the little things that Google puts into their various systems that make a lot of difference. Uh, certain things like the Bluetooth input audio, uh, those are like nice things to have, I guess, if you really need it. Uh, but the main thing I'm talking about here is stabilization for video. You have all the different levels of stabilization you would expect from the Pixel 6s, um, and most of them, I think almost all of them, can be recorded at 4K resolution. So really good, nice stable footage at 4K. 
But as I keep saying, Tensor is allowing for more than that, more reliable, more mostly smooth features to be added on top of the expected camera ability. Here's one of my favorites. All of the reliable voice features like live transcription and voice to text are things that I often use on the Pixel 6 Pro and now it's been brought over to a more affordable device so more and more people can benefit from it. Seriously, it's actually made it so that I don't want to type out long emails or captions and social media apps anymore. If I have a Pixel around, I'm talking it out, I'm proofreading and then I'm adding stylistic edits later. Speaking of social media, there's a feature in the recorder now where you can record a voice or voices, have it transcribed, and then when you go to share that particular recording, you can actually make a video clip that can be posted to places like Instagram or Twitter. You might actually see me do this more often because um, it would be an easy way to just get some thoughts out there, and it's pretty accurate because of that transcription. One last little feature that I'll mention here has to do with the Google Assistant being integrated in more places. The microphone array and tensor processing mean that Google Assistant stuff should help make the Assistant on here just as reliable as on the Pixel 6 Pro. Now, I do continue to prefer the method of holding down the power button and talking to Google Assistant walkie-talkie style, and that continues here. But take a look at this. We have quick phrases where certain contexts mean that you don't have to say the hot phrase anymore. See, context matters because in certain situations like alarms or calls, you can just straight up say the things that you need to, like answer or decline or stop or snooze. I literally used that this morning, almost yelling snooze a couple of times since I had to talk over the loud ringtone. Bottom line, all the help that Assistant brings to the table just keeps getting better, and the A-Series is included in those evolutions. Now that I'm here, I didn't realize how long it's been since I've hung out with my favorite ducks here in the Arboretum. Always will highlight whenever I come out here. But also, took a quick picture in that particular section to show off one of the main features that Pixels uh, tend to have, or they mark it um, pretty heavily, and that's the magic eraser. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that the waterfall is not running right now. <laughs> uh, super hot out right now, like almost 100 degree weather here in Southern California, where there's also a drought. So you might notice that I haven't really pixel peeped or talked too far about camera quality. That's because I wasn't expecting anything, let's say, revolutionary with the Pixel 6a. You'll get your HDR enhancements in both photos and videos, courtesy of Google's computational enhancements, which means that those 12 megapixel shooters will be able to get good pictures in not so good scenes. Colors and contrast will be vivid and high even if the resolution isn't and the zoom levels just won't get that high. Video is where you'd probably see the most improvements from the Pixel 5a now that Tensor is putting in the work with HDR in real time. HDR improvements that include the front facing camera, I mean take a look at this, the sun is bearing down behind me, I should be blown out but it looks pretty decent. For now, the best way I can describe the Pixel 6a is like this. I don't think I've ever disliked using an A-series phone. I mean, they're more affordable than top-tier flagships while still managing to bring some of the Pixel line's best and most useful features. For a casual or general smartphone user who just needs something easy to use on the daily, the 6a continues the tradition of hitting those marks. Only now, it's doing so in way more places than just the camera. But don't get me wrong, this camera is still one you can reach for with a lot of confidence. It's not the most capable camera compared to some, even some competitors in this price point, but all of the basics are covered, and then they are enhanced in the ways that we know Google is capable. For a smartphone price below $500, so far it's feeling like a great choice for great performance and an almost great camera. And when I say an almost great camera, I mean one that might not have all the capabilities that I need, but it should more than fit the needs of most of the people who aren't looking for more than $1,000 worth of phone. For more on this, the Pixel 6a, make sure you look forward to my upcoming content where I talk about what worked and what didn't. To do so, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you know when it comes out. After that, you can sound off by hitting the like button and by getting into the comments down below. Tell me your thoughts, your questions, and if you are going to get the Pixel 6a for yourself. But from there, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your tea, everybody.